Good morning. Good morning, Allison. How are you today? Well, we've talked about this already. We are both exactly identical today, Leah. We are both in the mindset that we just want to go back to our most comfortable place in the house and read a book for the rest of the day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I I have an idea that I think we could get everyone on board with. Yeah. That as librarians, we should get five reading days a year where we just like instead of reporting to work, we're just like, nope, today's a reading day. And we stay home and we read. We we, we could, you know, prove that we were reading somehow, write a review. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But um yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. Is read. That that that's it. I want to curl up and that read. Sounds great. And you know what? I feel like honestly, while we could probably justify it easier in our profession, probably everyone should have that, shouldn't they? Shouldn't every yeah. job have that built in? And you know, it doesn't have to be like super surveillance or anything. But you just you say this is what what I yeah this is what I read today, and it made me happier and better as a person to have done it. Yes, I mean, look, today is so gray and it's raining mm -hmm. and it's, I'm sure it's cold. I haven't been outside yet, but I'm sure it's cold. Yeah. It's January. So, yeah. you know, it's the perfect day to just curl up and read. Yeah. And I know. It just seems appropriate that we should get to. I know, I know. So you and I have both been struggling with that this morning. Um, and my the way that I uh, coped with it was my shirt that says my weekend plans and it's just a row <laughs> of <laughs> So that's why I was doing and thankfully at the library, I've mentioned this before, we're allowed to wear book themed shirts. Um, well, usually on Fridays and Saturdays, but when we're close to the public and doing curbside pickup, you'll see them more often because, you know, it's a different, well, different right atmosphere right now. Yeah. Yeah. So we can wear a book it's themed. Laid back in some ways, <laughs> very not laid back in other ways. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> So right. the dressing code is more a little more relaxed right now. <laughs> right. Except, except that the ways that it is much more restricted, which is that we're all wearing masks. <laughs> so. <laughs> and Andrea loves your shirt. So oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> yes. It just it was the only option today, really, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and also my I cannot live without books mug. It's just a it's just a vibe we're feeling today. Right. Yeah. I uh had it been clean, I probably would have wore my today's a good day to read. Sure, but <laughs> great shirt. I love that. Morning, Audrey. Yeah, is anyone else feeling that today? I mean, just I know we're all in different places, but the weather, I don't know where what it's like where you are, but it just yeah. It's just yeah. And, yeah. and this morning I started chili in the crock pot. So mm -hmm. I'm all in the smell that, which is just it's just what I didn't need. I did not need that extra enticement of like, oh, but and then I could also have chili. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you're gonna be very happy when you come home from work and can curl up with your book and eat chili and Yes. Yes. Oh Thomas Jefferson knew what he was talking about is the comment and that's that oh. who made this quote and he did. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um so what are you said you're that you just can't wait to curl up with a book. I know we were, we have plenty to talk about today, but what book are you reading? That you um, want to curl up with? I talked about it on here before. Um, let me get the title right. I have to look it up. Oh, no, that's fine. I'm um, sorry. I did on the spot. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Uh, yes, I was hoping you would read that. Yes. I, I just started it yesterday. I'm only like in chapter two, but it's really good so far. So. I've heard such good things about that book in the online community yeah. and um and so i was hoping that you would read it and report back to us what you thought <laughs> i'm like i said i'm only like two chapters into it but so far i'm really liking it good so. oh good we have a morning, morning oh, virginia yes yeah, so we have a comment from virginia who says it's a great day to kick back relax or even meditate or sit by the fire or have a movie day yes all of that sounds like a perfect use of this day I really wish I had a fireplace. That would be so nice to just read in front of the fireplace. You know, yeah. that would just that would be lovely. That would that's the kind of ambient sound I can get behind. I'm still I'm so sorry. Mary isn't here today, so she can't defend herself. I am not into ambient cat noises. That is not <laughs> it's not my thing, and uh, it that's fine though. But ambient sound of a fireplace, I feel like is more on my level. <laughs> I love the sound of thunderstorms. Like that is one of those, those those sounds that I could just listen to. And I think that and a fire would just 
be perfect together. So yeah. The book that I'm going to read this weekend is a book for a book club that I'm in that I have put off too long. It's like a gazillion pages long it's <laughs> due on Tuesday. Book club is Tuesday. I have the next pick in book club, which means I definitely have to go and I can't blow off this book. It's like, I feel like it's bad karma. If you blow off the book right before your pick, what have you done? So it's uh, strange. The dreamer has anyone read this? Can anyone encourage me? It is just, it's just very long. <laughs> and, um, when a book is this big, sometimes there's the, there's more words in the page than I'd hoped. We'll put it that way. Um, so this is what I'm going to be doing on this long. Really for very large margins. <laughs> <laughs> Extra space between the lines. Right? Pretty much. And there's, yeah, it's, it's not as bad as it could be, but it's different than I'd hoped. So um, we have other plans in the comments. It's Audrey's day off. Ah, oh, Audrey. Sorry, right. I'm jealous. Yeah, lucky you. Uh, she plans on binge watching something. <laughs> yes. Uh, she plans on binge watching something. Let us know if you decide what it will be and napping. That sounds perfect. And Carrie says ambient purrs are the best. So that's fine. We're purrs are different. The cat sounds the way it was playing in my head was like yeah, not right. like peaceful purring. It was like something else. Purrs are the best though. I think that purrs are a soothing noise. I get yeah. so. Yeah, you picture it like you can feel the vibration. It's almost more vibration even than like a sound, which I realize sound is a vibration scientifically, but you know what I mean. Audrey says she has read it. It is long. It is good and immersive and not exactly happy. So that's a good, thank you, Audrey, for your review. Immersive is fine. If it's going to be long, I like actually really like long books as long as they are immersive. So I'll take it. Okay. And she's going to be watching she today. Oh. <laughs> Nice. <sighs> I, when I was a kid, I I loved the He-Man cartoons and the She-Ra cartoons. So I have not seen this new. Yeah. Era, but, <laughs> yes, but when I was a kid, I, I did I was very much a fan of She-Ra. I thought she was awesome. Melanie says you must have been thinking cat screeching. <laughs> yeah, I probably I probably was howling, yelling, fighting. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That sound they make when they're in heat outside. <laughs> you know? Don't even talk to me about that sound. There, that happened right outside my bedroom window once over the summer. And I was just like, I'm lying in bed awake. Like my eyes are wide open. I'm like, why is this happening right now? Because not only do you hear that sound, you then hear a cat fight not long after. No, and I know. <laughs> or in the case of my backyard, the story I know I've shared, the cat and the possum fighting. That really made me feel like I was living in a cosmopolitan <laughs> Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm not made for this. I intentionally did not live somewhere like in the country. Right, yeah. So. All right. Well, Audrey is really enjoying the show, so that's good. And it's on Carrie's watch list. Well, now it'll and we talk about things on here that don't like they never even entered my brain space, but now it's in my brain space. So like who knows? Six months from now I'll be saying, Hey, remember that time? I watched that. <laughs> and Melanie says it is really hideous, and I'm assuming she's talking about the cat noises. So, <laughs> yeah, and it is because it is. Uh, so, um, what are you looking forward to reading in 2021, Allison? Okay, so we're gonna start with me, huh? Um, so, one of the things that I'm gonna be doing this year that I may want to make an effort to do is read more advanced readers' copies of things. Okay. Um, and for those who aren't aware. Um, publishers will give out copies of books that are going to be published soon. A lot of times they're e-copies and you can get these through Goodreads. You can also get them through a site called NetGalley that anyone can sign up for, but I will say librarians and booksellers and teachers tend to have a greater preference on those sites for this exact reason right now what we're doing. Um, <laughs> But the, usually, like I said, usually it's e-copies um, you can read on your Kindle and then you read them, you give a review um, through the site. And then a lot of times people will review on Goodreads. And then before a book comes out, it will have a starred rating. It will have reviews. And um, that's why sometimes you're like, well, this book isn't even out yet. How are people saying they've read it? That's that is how they have read it. And so it helps out authors and publishers. And so it's and, you know, people who like to read enjoy being part of that. So it's kind of a win-win situation. So I kind of wanted to make an effort to read some more of those this year. 
Um, and so the first book I was going to mention is one of those advanced readers copies that I just read. And um, it is called Who is Maud Dixon? And it comes out. That one yet. I, hold on. I told you I have like 14 different, like I've got like a tablet and a paper, like I'm like in the war room or something. Um, it comes out March 2nd. It's a debut novel. Um, the author, I want to say, <laughs> that's a fa that there's a failure right there. I want to say it's Alexandra Andrews. Um, and it is a, I would call it like a slow burn, like literary thriller. Okay. And this is that it is set in the literary world, but also that it is a little bit more literary in style. It focuses more on language and characters than necessarily just driving you to the next plot point. But it does do that. Um, it was the type of book where I didn't just flip the pages to find out the e pages to find out what happens next. Yeah. I, um, you know, wanted to read each sentence. Um, it is about a young woman named Florence Darrow, and that's a great name. And she works at a literary agency. She wants to be a writer. And the big book that everyone's talking about is called Missi Mississippi Foxtrot. And it is, um, you know, it's just, it's just one of those books that just blows up out of nowhere. But the author is an anonymous, it's a pseudonym, and the pseudonym is Maud Dixon, and no one knows who Maud Dixon is. And Florence Darrow unexpectedly gets an opportunity to become the assistant to Maud Dixon to move in with her and help her on her research her next book. Um, but it is a, a thriller, so it is a twisty story that has to do with stolen and mistaken identities. Um, mm -hmm. It is vicious in parts, um, and it seemed like it had just enough it had just enough moments where I was shocked combined with moments where I was like, no, I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen next. Why are you doing that? That's what's going to happen next. And I feel like I need enough of those to make me feel like I'm part of it, you know, yeah. um, but then also like a few moments of like, oh my gosh. And um, so I won't give away too much about the actual plot, but it is, like I said, like kind of a twisty, slow burn literary thriller. And I think I think it. I think it will be popular. I really liked it. That sounds really cool. Yeah. I'm gonna have to check that one out. Like I said, I hadn't even heard of that one yet. It's. It's funny because like sometimes I do a lot of ordering for nonfiction, so I'm really mm -hmm. far ahead on like what's coming out nonfiction wise. Whereas with fiction, sometimes I feel like I'm catching up with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Andrea says, "Ooh, vicious." <laughs> She's never heard a book described that way before. That may even not be the best way to describe it. It's, I don't know. But, but you know, there were moments where I was like, oh, she's really going to do that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> kind of, it felt vicious to me. <laughs> <laughs> One of the books that I'm really looking forward to, um, it's called Mother May I. And it is by Jocelyn Jackson. It's coming out April 6th. Her books oh. always have some kind of element of... I want to say magic, but like some kind of like no. supernatural or um, just some there's there's an element in there that's like not real, you know. There's yeah. that element of um, some some kind of power, you know, yeah. most clairvoyant or they see ghosts, you yeah. know, like something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. I, I should, shouldn't say all of her books, but all of the ones that I've read, I haven't read yeah. this book yet. So I'm, I'm trying, um, yeah. I haven't quite figured out. There's revenge, it's a revenge story. Okay, but, this um, good. This woman, it sounds like she's kind of made some kind of deal to have like this perfect life. And then suddenly her child vanishes and um, she has to make a phone call. Like she has to do something that seems like very like mm -hmm. not, it all bad, but the consequences of it are, and is it worth it? And it's mm. it's kind of like, ooh, that just sounds yeah. one, terrifying. Anyone who's a parent, their child vanishing is just absolutely right. That's, that's always going to be the um, what's the word? The caveat when we talk about like book plots that are like horrific and devastating, yeah. and we call them fun. Yes. If they happen to you in real life, obviously this is terrible. But as readers of things like <laughs> mysteries and thrillers, <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, like, but I just love her books and just you know her stories and her. 
she always has these really um interesting female characters like they're just to know what book we're talking about mother may i by jocelyn jackson and we will have a list of these we have each prepared our portions already we both failed in one way or the other about getting it together with it but they will be <laughs> merged together and on the on on the comments or wherever mary posts them um this afternoon Monday. yeah 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 we'll we'll, we'll get it up mm -hmm. um but uh yeah so that one to me it's like ooh, just just because yeah. her books like the way she looks at the situation is always very very interesting to me i think yeah that's great i'm not even familiar with her and i started taking in no notes but then i realized we'll have this list i'll just use the list like everybody else i don't need okay. to write down notes while we're talking <laughs> um so i guess my next one if uh, my next one is called it was another arc that I recently read. It's called This Is Not The Jess Show. And the author is Anna Carey. And this comes out February 2nd. This is a YA book, which isn't typically my what I read. But um, it pulled me in because the blurb said that it was for fans of Black Mirror and that it was set in the 90s. And those are two things. I do. I am a fan of Black Mirror. And then um, the 90s is my nostalgia period. That's when I grew up. And so um, I thought I would just, you know, see see what it was like. And um, essentially, it's one of those things you can't describe the plot too much without giving it away. I mean, for anyone who's seen Black Mirror. Um, but basically, uh, there's a teenage girl, friends, parents, sister, dog, um, living her life. And she begins to feel like things are out of sorts, like something isn't quite what it seems. Mm -hmm. and um, And maybe like people know some things that she doesn't. And this is on the back, happens in the first few pages, not giving anything away. One major example of that is her friend drops her backpack and out of it slides something that is very recognizable to us as an iPhone. And um, so about a third of the way through the book or so, she figures out what's going on. And then the rest of the book is kind of dealing with the fallout of that. So if you figure it out soon, you don't have to wait till like the very end for a realization, which I always think is kind of frustrating. If you know everything ahead of time and then you're like, well, I don't want to just watch her no, figure out what I already know. Um, yeah. But it was fun to read. It was it was a fun, quick read, you know, entertaining and just a fun idea. And um, for the 90s components, um, it, that was also pretty fun to read and kind of have these throwback things, including Gap Dream Perfume, which my goodness, that perfume, Dream was what it was called from the Gap. Gosh, that stuff, I loved that. And then also she mentioned Delia's catalogs. I looked at, through so many Delia's catalogs. And then also she mentioned this Disney World commercial that if my brother were here, um, he could vouch for me. I know those Disney World commercials. And she talked about like how they pulled her and her sister in and they wanted to go to Disney World so bad. And so did we, we did go to, we did get to go to Disney World, but my brother and I, we saved money together, like in a jar to fund a trip to Disney World. And I don't know that we ever had over $15 in that jar because we were kids and not very responsible with saving money and had no jobs. But um, anyway, I just relate to that. And that and that was fun. So there's the, the twisty aspect of it, but then also just like, if you just want like a hit of like Lisa Frank, Trapper Keepers, you know. <laughs> yeah. That sounds great. Um, yeah. Uh, one of the, the books on my list is also, well, actually, I've got two YA books. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the first one is called uh, The Wide Starlight by Nicole L'Esperance. I, I, I don't really know how to pronounce that name. Mm -hmm. um, it, it has to do, again, there's kind of like this magical element, kind of, mm -hmm. sort of, um, with the Aurora Borealis, the, the Northern Lights. Um, Eli is 16 years old and she's trying to remember what happened the night her mother disappeared. They were in Norway on a glacier and it was the night, a night where you could see the, the Northern Lights. And there's this legend that you never whistle during the, uh, the Northern Lights or they'll swoop down and steal you away. And she heard her mother whistle and then she was gone. So oh, no. it's years later, right? She's on vacation in a, 
want to say it was Cape Cod, but I don't remember. And where she, where she is, she can see the Northern Lights and she whistles because, you know, I, I think she whistles, but then like strange stuff starts happening. And like, is she, is it her mother? Is she seeing her mother? Um, and then like, she, she gets this note about like, meet me where I left you. So she's got to like, she's trying to just uncover what happened the night her mom disappeared. So yeah. it looks really weird, weird and interesting, but yeah. also, I don't know. It just, the way the description yeah, is it's one of those things. Yeah. It's one of those things where you read that description and you're like, well, now I have to read it because I have to find out how did the Northern Lights plus whistle make her disappear? Like, right? yeah. I have to find that out. <laughs> um, and Audrey said yes. The, redu the reviews do say it's Cape Cod where she where she is, and she's had her eye on that one too. Nice. So, um, I'm really looking forward to that one. It comes out February 16th, okay. so a month from tomorrow. <laughs> nice. uh, so, and the other YA book that I'm looking yeah. forward to is called Some Other for Now by mm -hmm. Sarah Everett. Um, it's kind of one of those the girl next door and kind of grew up with the boys next door. Like her mom kind of took care of all of them. And um, she kisses one of the brothers. I don't know which one, but then like it totally ruins the whole dynamic and the relationship and things fall apart. Mm -hmm. And then it's sad. Like the next door neighbor, the boy's mother has cancer and she's dying. And it's like, there's like one last summer together so she and the one brother like pretend to be a couple to, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. Um, <clears throat> why does anyone ever pretend to be a couple in these things, right? <laughs> right. Um, but he hates her because of the wedge she has driven between him and his brother. Mm -hmm. And there's this whole love hate relationship coming together, growing up storyline. It just, yeah. it sounds like it's going to be yeah. a story, which is, Sometimes I'm you need a love, love story. story. <laughs> <laughs> nice. so, and that one comes out February 23rd. So. Nice. And these are all coming out like in the nearish future. So these are the things you don't have to like wait too long for. Yeah. Um, so I have I guess I'll do I have one more that's we'll call it YA emerging adult type of thing. And it, <laughs> I feel like a lot of people have heard me talk about this book, but I just thought it was so fun. It's um, another debut novel. It's I hope I didn't talk about it on here. I just know I held it up in our screenshot. Lycanthropy and Other Chronic Illnesses uh, by Kristen O'Neill. And it is a book about um, a girl who is college age and she has to come home from school because she has Lyme disease. And the Lyme disease is really taking its toll and it's making it difficult for her to complete her medical school training. And so she's home living with her parents, hopefully just temporarily. And she kind of gets in with this online community who has a Discord uh, server about having chronic illnesses. And a girl she's kind of followed and hung out with, hung out with on Tumblr is also in that group. And um, her name's Bridget. And she, so, you know, they, 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 some of them disclose more about their chronic illnesses than others. Um, and Bridget kind of, they're pretty close online, but she kind of disappears one day. And um, the main character for, you know, worries about that and it turns out she doesn't live all that far away so she ends up trying to track her down and discovers that Bridget's chronic illness appears to be that she is a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> Happens once a month. She her she can't trust her body. It fails her in all these ways. It makes her life more challenging to navigate. It's a yes certainly a chronic illness. Um and yeah. it was just, it was a really fun and entertaining book. It was well well written and I think it was really well done in the balance between like, of course, there's going to be some shock and disbelief that perhaps someone is a werewolf, but they don't like linger on that too long. There's no like angst around it. It's just at some point you just you have to accept this is Whoa. a werewolf. So we're going to try to move forward. And they they her her condition seems to be getting worse. She seems to be turning more often. So the plot of the book is is mainly them trying to figure out how to how to help her keep that from happening. And um, it's told another nice part of it is that there is regular narration, but it's also told through that Discord server messages, through Tumblr messages, through text. So it's one of those things where you kind of get different perspectives. I love stories like that, mm -hmm. where it's like, yeah. Yes. It's not just yeah. page of text, it's, you know, texts and that kind yeah. of stuff. 
So that one supposedly comes out in April. Okay. So it's a little farther out, but. Virginia wanted to know if these books will be available on audio. Some of them I'm sure will, like um, The Mother May I by Jocelyn Jackson. Mm -hmm. I know that that one is going to be an audio book. The mm -hmm. YA books are hit and miss. Some of them mm -hmm. the publishers decide to do as audio books and some of them they don't. It's one mm -hmm. of those, the world yeah. has its own rules and I don't know what they are. Yes. Mm -hmm. If I was in charge, everything would be available as an audio book because that's my preferred format, but they don't want right. to make those decisions. Yes, and it's not even easy to discover ahead of time because if you search on Amazon, Amazon has audible versions of nearly everything, even if it's just like a reading of it and not like an actual, this is the audiobook version of this. You can, right. so like searching, Am like we can search Amazon for release dates of books very easily, but you can't always get the right answer from Amazon about whether it's going to be an actual audiobook that's released that we would have. Um, and on our, some of our services like Hoopla and um, digital downloads, they aren't really, they don't often appear until they're available. And so you yeah. can't check ahead of time, is there going to be an audiobook on here because it's not out yet? Yeah, that's one of those things. And sometimes like the audio book will come out like six weeks after the book does. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of them like bigger, bigger books, it's mm -hmm. out same day as the book release is. But yeah. some of them, it's not. It, so it's always hard to tell if something's going to be available in large print or audio um, ahead of time. It just... And then sometimes it's not in the originally and then the book gets bigger than they thought it would. And then now we have to make the large print. Now we have to make the audio book. Yeah. It's uh, publishing is fickle. <laughs> that it is. <laughs> um, let's see if there are any other ones that I really want to hit on. We're dying to talk about. One of the ones that I'm kind of looking forward to, and I really don't know much about it at all, it's called Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. Um, okay. He he won the Nobel Prize in Literature. He's um, a Japanese author. But Clara is an artificial friend. And um, like it seems, it looks like it's told from her perspective. And she's like in the store observing people, like waiting for someone to choose her. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, it's kind of one of those, those, those ones that kind of makes you think like, what does it really mean to love someone? But sure. I have always, I don't know why, I've always been fascinated with artificial intelligence and robots and like human like robots. And mm -hmm. it just, it seems really, I, I, I don't know, it's fascinating to me. And I just yeah. want to learn more. And I think maybe having, well, now I don't, but you know, for over a decade, I lived alone. And it's just like, you know, sometimes, It'd be nice to have someone to talk to, like even if right. I, I, I don't know, but but yeah. So I'm just yeah. I've always been fascinated by artificial intelligence, and so I'm really looking forward to this book. So that sounds so fun. That that sounds really, really, March second. March second. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a really interesting concept to have it from yeah her point of view, waiting to be chosen. chosen. Yes. Um, one book that I de definitely didn't want to talk about, even though I'm almost certain I won't read it. Um, there will be an audiobook of this, though, is that Andy Weir, the author of The Martian, has a new book coming out in May, May 4th. It's called Project Hail Mary. Um, and the reason why I wanted to talk about it is because um, it sounds like it's going to be more like The Martian than Artemis was. Artemis wasn't super well received. And part of that, I think, is because it was a very different story than The Martian was. And so this one... I'll read you just, this is publisher's, publisher's blurb. Um, Ryland Grace is the sole survivor on a desperate last chance mission. And if he fails, humanity and the earth itself will perish. Except right now, he doesn't know that. He can't even remember his own name, let alone the nature of his assignment or how to complete it. All he knows is that he's been asleep for a very, very long time. And so then he basically, he wakes up on this spaceship, his crewmates are dead. He's floating out somewhere, wherever. And um, he has to puzzle out an impossible scientific mystery and conquer an extinction level threat to our species. So I think it's going to be much more like the Martian in yeah. storyline and tone and, you know, plot and pacing. Um, so anyway, I think people will be excited about that. Um, another one that I am looking forward to 
it's coming out this summer. I've seen release dates in both June and July. So uh, this summer is all I'll say. It's called Survive the Night by Riley Sager, S-A-G-E-R. It's described as the 90s road trip from hell, which just sounds, you well, know. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Um, there's Tell us more. Girl, uh, there's a girl. She's in college. Um, she finds a ride on the, the bulletin board, you know. Do you remember those? Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. yes. The ride board. Um, so she, she meets this, this guy meets up with this guy and they're, they're driving somewhere. I don't, I don't know where, but and I, I can't for the life of me understand why she didn't think about this before getting in the car with a stranger, but apparently there's a murderer at <laughs> on Um, and suddenly she's in this car with this guy and realizes, oh my God, he might be the murderer. So, <laughs> So, um, and especially considering that her friend was one of the victims of the campus killer, I don't know why it didn't occur to her before, but <laughs> I'm just, it's because it's set in the 90s, I'm sure we'll get a lot of that 90s nostalgia, which I'm looking no, forward to, and, you know, having gone to college in the late 90s, um, mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, this is one that I am definitely looking forward to. Although it's awesome. a little bit before my college years, it's still. Um, yeah, you still, especially when something happens, kind of like Audrey was talking about on the one show with her. When we, when you're 14, you're looking at 18 year olds yeah. as being yeah. like the coolest. So whatever 18 year olds were doing is relevant to you as 14. And, you, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so yeah. When you said that, um, this, that reminded me of this other book I'd written down called Together We Will Go. J. Michael Straczynski. It's supposed to come out July 6th. This is not, no, okay. For a second, I was like, this is not what you just said, right? Because you said a July date. Um, Together we will go. And it's about Mark Antonelli, a failed young writer looking down the barrel at 30, planning a cross country road trip. And his plan is to drive across the country in a bus and then find a really beautiful ocean view and drive the bus over the edge, over the edge of the cliff. Bleak, yes. Yeah. And so he hires someone to drive it and he puts out an ad for others to join him with the explicit thing. This is what we're going to do. Like he invites people. Do you want to drive yeah. this bus to the cliff with me? Okay. <laughs> you know, very normal also. Um, very and so other people, people sign up. There's a, you know, a motley crew of people who decide to be on the bus. They drive this cross country road trip together. And it says, um, as cr they cross state lines and complicate, Sorry, as they cross state lines and complications to the initial plan arise, it becomes clear that this is a novel as much about the will to live as the choice to end it. It mentions final unforgettable moments as they hurdle toward decisions awaiting them. Um, and so, but it did mention that when you, we talked about this before, it mentioned that some of it is told through different formats, not just straightforward narration, but sometimes through emails and letters and texts and things like that. So I thought that is certainly an interesting concept. Um, what is the name of that one again? Together We Will Go. I'm going to have to add that one to my list because that definitely sounds like. <laughs> yes, it doesn't yeah. come out until July. And it's one of those that it could go either way. It could be something that doesn't keep my interest at all, or it could be something really engaging. And that's part of the fun of looking ahead at books that are going to come out. You just. Yeah. It just gives you something to be excited about. Who knows? There's another one that sounds really interesting to me, and it's. Um, it says, uh, you know, this was one to read if you never want to sleep soundly again, which oh, I like sleeping soundly though. <laughs> it's called the lost Vill village by Camilla Sten. Um, Alice is this documentary filmmaker and in 1959, her grandmother's family, along with most everyone in this town disappears. Okay. And um, so she puts together a film crew and they go to this town to try to figure out what happened, but there is someone or something there that doesn't want them to figure it out. So okay. things start happening and it just, it sounds very intense and like, I think this one was listed as like one of the most, um, it, it was like the most anticipated thriller of 2021. Oh, nice. um, okay. 
So yeah, this one has gotten some really good reviews already from people who've, who've gotten to read it. So that's yeah. cool. So well, that actually kind of makes me think of this other one that I not plot wise, but there, there's a, it comes out February second. It's called The Survivors. The author is Jane Harper. The description was vague enough. There was a wreck, a boat, a shipwreck. There are some survivors, or maybe not. And down the road, people are coming to terms with this shipwreck. That it's like a three sentence blurb. Um, yeah. But what I when the, what I was reading is that people seem to really like Jane Harper, and I was and were excited for this book because of that. And I was wondering if anyone on here had ever read Jane Harper or had anything to add about that. I know that that's not really we're supposed to be bringing new books that. Yeah. This this had good reviews. It was called The Survivors by Jane Harper. It comes out February second, but it, the blurb was so short. What I was really getting was what people had thought about Jane Harper, which was really positive. And I just wondered if anyone was familiar with her. I'm trying to think what else she has written because I know that that one already has a waiting list in okay. in the catalog. Yeah. Um, but it was a very mysterious blurb. Yeah, like I, like I said, there was a shipwreck or. Her, her, her books that I have made that I okay. Have made. Well, then maybe I'll I have it on my list, so maybe I'll read the survivor. Maybe I'll wait in line to read the survivors by Jane Harper. Um, dry, Melanie says. I'm oh. guessing that it is another book by Jane Harper. I have not. Have I don't know clearly, no one else has read either, which is fine. Um, so I'll have to be the one. I'll have to figure it out. Um, mm -hmm. When you were talking about. Um, if you never want to sleep well at night again, this isn't a new book, but it's on my list to read this year. I'm going to read It by Stephen King. And uh, yeah. I, I've seen the movies. I've seen the old one, seen the new one. And I just, I feel like if there's ever going to be a time for me to be prepared and not be too scared, it would be after having seen recently the movie. So I'm going to try to read, I'm going to try to read It. Um, anyway, so that was a, just that has nothing to do with new books, but just I'm afraid of not being able to sleep at night. <laughs> If we're going scary, I'll, I've got one more scary one to throw in. Um, the Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. It's a horror. I don't like to that already. <laughs> it's a horror uh, book. It looks like it's coming out August 3rd. So this one we don't have in the catalog. Well, we don't have in the catalog yet because we don't order them that far in advance. But um, it's a story, and this has just got a very short description because it's so far out so far. Mm -hmm. Two girls are backpacking in the woods and they encounter and they cross paths with a serial killer. So I, I imagine there it's it doesn't go well. I'm I'm guessing it does for them. But All right, it, nice. It, I'm guessing. I have I have no idea. Uh, but yeah. survival skills and outsmarting. Right. I, I, bet, I, I bet they are um creative enough to come up with ways to right. outmaneuver him, I'm thinking. I don't know. That sounds, that sounds encouraging. I would much rather read something where they're able to outmaneuver than something where... I don't know that that's true. I'm completely making it up. All I know is... Can report back. <laughs> you can report back to us about it and let us know. Yeah. <laughs> um, let, me have, let me mention one more thing, only because we've mentioned it before. Um, although I told you, I emailed Leah yesterday, guys. I should have emailed all of you whose email addresses I don't have and said we should plan on a long show. Um, <laughs> I have too many books. Um, but you mentioned this a couple weeks ago um, in December, probably. Uh, Nick, the book about uh, Nick from The Great Gatsby. Um, the author is Michael Ferris Smith. It actually is out. It came out January 5th. And um, I just wanted to bring that up because you mentioned it last month. Uh, and it is about Nick Carraway. And it's his story about before he moved to West Egg and fell into Gatsby's circle. It's about his time in the war and then apparently in New Orleans is the life he's envisioned for Nick in this story. Um, and just something else that Leah, you may have read this as well, but The Great Gatsby comes out of copyright this year. Yes. So, so there are a million and three versions of it now. Yeah. And, I and that means it's going to be, no, it's, I'm not looking forward to it either. And it's going to be, it's going to become one of those books that is hard to make sure you're getting a good copy of it and not a reproduced yucky one because yeah, well, yeah. 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 Now, now that it's out of copyright, anybody can make it. And so, yeah, there's going to be all kinds of Gatsby. There's already a lot of Gatsby's inspired things, but now it's going to, it can legally get out of hand. 
There's one more book that I, I we're running long. I don't care. I'm throwing this one in. I want to talk about it. And it comes out this month, um, January 26th. It's called The X Talk, E-X. I've seen um, the cover of that one. Yes. And it, it says for NPR lovers, this is for you because I, I am an NPR lover. So, um, but it's Seattle Public Radio and there are these two, uh, DJ, not DJs, what do you call them? Just like a radio show host or something? Yeah, thank you, host. Um, one is there, she's been there for years. The other guy's new, I, I don't know, but they do not get along. And, um, but they have to pretend to be exes and give relationship advice over the air. That's so, kind of a good one. If they're not pretending to date, they're pretending and, to be exes. So of course they're gonna fall in love, cause you know, it's a romance and that's what it is but it just looks so great that i i am very much looking forward to it well what well, since you mentioned since you mentioned that we're just going to keep one up we're going to keep oh but just one more because of um i i don't know if i'm going to read this book or not but it jumped out at me because i thought it sounded interesting um it, it looks like it came out this week it's called the charmed wife the author is called is olga grushin and um it's a cinderella it's a like after their married Cinderella story. Okay. So Cinderella married the man of her dreams. Um, yet now, 13 and a half years later, things have gone badly wrong and her life is far from perfect. One night, fed up and exhausted, she sneaks out of the palace to get help from the witch who, for a price, offers love potions. Um, but as she's making the love potion, instead she decides she just wants him dead. And so... Um, I don't, it, it's not clear if she really does, if he does end up dying, I, it might be like a murder mystery, like a murder thing where she's, you know, accused of killing him. I'm not 100%. Sure. Okay. The blurb is all, that's all I had. But um, it says nothing is like it seems, twists and turns, magical, dark, swiftly shifting paths. And so I think there's always something to a fairy tale retelling or reimagining or what happens after the happy ending and the charmed wife that just, it sounded like it would, it would have to be fine anyway. Yeah. Um, that that description brought up one more that I have to talk about. It's called The Lost Apothecary. Um, and it's, I've heard of that one. It's, it's like two women's stories. Like the, the woman current day is researching the story from the past. So mm -hmm. it was like, they're, they're, it seems like their stories overlap somehow. I don't exactly know all of that. Um, but the the lost apothecary in the 1800s in England, women really didn't have a whole lot of rights, um, and there there weren't a whole lot of recourse for women who were in very bad situations. Mm -hmm. But um, the apothecaries, there was like an apothecary you could go to to get poison to take care of your abusive husband. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. um, so it's like a present day historian is researching this apothecary who murdered. Yes. Yeah. What was, was really interesting as I was reading this is I had just seen one a story about a, an apothecary from okay. like olden times who got wow. in trouble for murdering all these men. So it was it was kind of interesting that it was just like that is an interesting parallel. Yes, but um. Somehow, she discovered the the present day woman discovers something that will turn her life upside down. I don't know what it okay. is. Okay. Yes. Right. Carrie, getting rid of nasty husbands is very the much. Right. Of the carry. So yeah. we do have some comments. One is from Audrey that she says before she makes her list for 2021, she wants to see what wins the Youth Media Awards. And those um, are going to be announced the 25th. Is that correct? January 25th. And we're going to have. Audrey will be on Facebook Live, Live. Yeah. on Facebook Live that morning uh, to kind of have an after party to go through what has won and what she wished had won, and you know the nominees. At least that's my understanding of it. That's how I would imagine it. Um, Audrey and Mary will be here on Facebook Live around eleven ish in the morning, Monday, um, January twenty fifth. Talk about those. It the the Youth Media Awards. They'll be talking about like. Um, kid books and YA books. So since Audrey does the kid books and Mary does the YA books, we'll be here talking about those. So and there's it's like 
not that awards are the be all end all, but there's no, I mean, that's a, such a great starting point. Yes. You need a book that you know is going to be of a certain quality. Like maybe it's not for you, but you know, it's going to, it's going to be worth a read or you're going to read it and be like, I don't understand why this won any awards. And even that on its own is a talking point. So yeah. watching something like that is a great way to compile a list and to see what the landscape looks like and what people are thinking and saying about books, people who, um, have the power to choose award winners. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sometimes I don't agree with them, but sometimes they're spot on. It's really interesting. Yeah, it's fun. Um, can we send out where to get on the early release of text and other books like Med and Nursing? Um, okay. We, you can always get on like a, a, a list for the books that are that we've ordered through our catalog. So if you go to the library's website and put in like the title of the book that there's a search box right out the right in the center at the front of the, the, the catalog site. Um, and it's just FCD as in Fairfield County District, fcdlibrary.org. Um, put in the title and you can put yourself on hold for any books that are coming out, whatever the topic is. So. And those, and things like uh, medical school and nursing, types of, I'm, I'm thinking you're talking about study guides and things like mm -hmm. that. Those tend to come out annually, but yeah. I don't know. They, they stagger what time of year they come out. Sometimes they rebrand, you know, and so it's like the new edition or whatever. And that comes out in a different month than the old one did. And they kind of, they're all staggered and sometimes they're every other year. Um, so there's not a, I don't think there's a predict necessarily a predictable timeline other than a kind of a once a year. Yeah release um but if there's but, yeah. like a specific study guide you're looking for you could always call us and say hey do you have the most reach can you get me the most recent version of yeah. this study guide and we can pull you whatever is the most recent yeah because so. that's the other thing we do try everyone who's involved tries their best to keep it so that you can get the most recent one and it's easy to select the most recent one from a list some it's still beneficial to have last year's because if there's nothing if, if you'd rather have last year's than nothing, um, if nothing has changed all that much, but we try to make sure that it's you get the option to pick your most recent year and we'd really try to keep that correct. So we can get you that if you call or if you search the name of the test you're looking for. Sometimes with that testing stuff, it's easiest just to call and I walk to the shelf and look <laughs> because they, they change the names and like they'll be like, Barron's will have one and Princeton will have one. And it's just like, it, it's just easier to go to the shelf and see what's yeah. the newest one. I mean, that's a reflection of my job. And I'm still going to say it's easier to call. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm the one who puts that in there and I'm still going to say, yeah, just call them. But we, but we, we do it's our best. Because I can never remember the titles. That's. <laughs> Well, and because they do, they reissue them every year. We put them all on one giant record so that you can pick the right one and you don't have a gazillion records that say Barron's SAT, but it it doesn't matter. No one cares. I don't care about this and I do it, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we should do care, Allison, and you do a fabulous job. I just, sometimes I'm a slow, I'm slow at typing. I can walk there faster. <laughs> No, it's no, it's totally fine. So yeah, always call in and you can always do that. Anyone for anything, even if it's like I was watching the show and somebody mentioned a book and I don't remember what it was and I can't open the file. What was it? We'll help you with that. We'll figure it, we'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, you can always call for anything, especially since we're not open and you can't come in and browse. Yeah. And um, if you joined us late and you didn't hear earlier, we are, we do have lists of books. Um, we didn't get them together you know whatever we're step at a time. get them compiled into mm -hmm. one list and we will add it to the comments here to this program so if you're like oh they talked about a book that i really wanted to read and i don't remember the title it'll be in the comments later or or for those of you who probably want to be hearing this right now but who don't want to listen to us speak but would just like to see the list of books that's fine. I don't blame you. And you can just click on that and read the list of books without having to look at us again. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they not want to look at us? And there'll probably be a couple of books on the comment and on our list that we didn't even talk about. So do you, you want to know how long my list of books was? I did put the summaries. So the summaries take up, but I have 
eight pages of things that I wrote down. <laughs> so um, that long. It, but it just, I got in a role and it was exciting and I just, there's so much to read. And I started putting down stuff that maybe I wouldn't read, but I was like, I want people to know this is coming out. Right? Yes. And Virginia loves listening to us, which is great because we love to talk. Thank you. We're so, and we do love doing this show. I, I joke about that because who, you know, who wants to listen to their own selves? But um, I am, we are very happy yeah. to have you guys here listening on Friday morning. And we love to talk about books. So, <laughs> obviously, we hit 50 minutes. So, probably we should let these hostages go. <laughs> I'm very sorry we talked so long today, everyone. <laughs> Hopefully, well, you, you, there's a book you're now looking forward to. Yeah, as if you got one out of it, we've done our job. Um, and check the list later for more. Um, best of luck to all of us today, getting through this rainy day and doing something, something cozy with it. And Joyce is looking forward to our list. Say hi, Joyce. <laughs> all right, guys. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.